since you guys are already talking about it, we may as well jump into it. I was going to do a whole video on it myself, and then I basically saw other people have already done the work, so I may as well steal there. So, you know, fun to be a React streamer. Uh, <laughs> but no, Rave Says Day, so you basically already made the videos, and it's not that deep, but I will give you guys just a little bit of an overview of stuff that's been going on within the gaming industry. So there's a company called Sweet Baby Inc. The company is what we would call a useless company. They're a bunch of consultants. Now, anyone that has ever worked with consultants will know that consultant is basically just a word for I'm going to take your money and I'm going to do absolutely nothing. Consultants are useless. They don't, they literally mean nothing for anything. Uh, they basically exist just to create uh, more convoluted shit than what is actually required. I, I am yet to meet a consultant that actually teaches me anything that I didn't already fucking know. And I know many people that work in industries where all of the big companies work with consultants and they usually get angry working with the consultants because the consultants, the consultants don't do anything. They, 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 they're useless. They just waste a lot of time. But anyways, this particular consultancy firm prides themselves on being, what, what's the right word for it? They're very, very racist. They're very, very racist. Okay, so this is one of the people that work for Sweet Baby Inc. And uh, Felix at home wrote tweets, tweets such, such as, pay me to shoot down your white male lead game ideas. I usually get grossed out when straight white rich people kiss, but even I think those two are pretty cute. I just had a thought about trying this again with a photo of a young white person about to be ripped open, but I'm betting folks would immediately flag it as traumatic, and I'm guessing the image would get taken down before responses accumulated. Had a, night had a nightmare that I was a white male gamer, right? So these are the kinds of tweets that, um, that, that, that this person wrote. And then, of course, we have the explanation from Sweet Baby Inc., as to how things are supposed to work. And this is really where things get, I think, super gross from a gaming perspective. We have to look at story and narrative as one of the things that we can innovate on. Like when you bring someone in from a different culture, from a different background, from a different gender, they're going to create something that we haven't seen before. The way we, that we look at demographics is that we go, okay, the majority of our player base is, let's say, a white male, no, let's not say that. It is. The majority of gamers are white men. Like, th that's just, there's no arguing about that. The overwhelming majority of gamers on PC are white men. <laughs> are there girls that play video games on, on PC? Yes, of course there is. Are there girls that play games on console? Yes, of course there is. The If you go gamers across all platforms, it's 50-50. And the only reason it's 50-50 is because the overwhelming majority of mobile gamers are female. And it's the mobile gamers that bring the numbers of overall gamers to 50-50. But when you just look at PC, when you just look at console, the overwhelming majority of gamers are white males, right? Uh, now, this might come as a surprise to you, but the reason for that is, in Africa, most people don't have computers. And Africa happens to be the largest a collection of black people on the planet. So until Africa has access to electricity and computers, that number isn't going to change, right? It can only be good if Africa actually did get access to that because more gamers, more better, right? But for now, this is, this is their claim. But if you make something from the perspective of an Asian trans woman, it's really strong. Then it will work for people. People crave new stories. If you want to innovate, even to stay current, it's not about graphics, it's not about hardware, it's about opening up new perspectives for people. So I explain it as, it's important to, it's important to gain development to diversify. It's not just part of advocacy or activism, it is going to make your games better. We have seen no evidence of that, actually. And then Alex went on to say, also, of course, gamers are mostly white guys. You're making games for white guys. Try making games for somebody else. Maybe they'll show up. 
So the problem we have here, Mori, by the way, thanks for the follow. Really appreciate you. Welcome to the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The problem we run into here pretty much immediately, right, is the idea from the diversity specialists, like, for example, Sweet Baby Inc., is that you should make games for other for groups other than white males. Maybe they'll show up. The evidence shows that that is not the case. All of these groups, uh, all of the, the feminists online and all of the you know people of color online and all of the gay people online, none of them ever actually show up to play these fucking games that everyone claim is so good. Because when we go through the list of all these games that we are told are actually much better, and the only reason we hate these games is because we're racist white men, die. Suicide Squad. I was told repeatedly that the reason I didn't like Suicide Squad was because I was a white male. Uh, straight white male, I think, was the, the word used. Or the words used. The game's dead. Like, all of those people that attacked everyone for disliking the game because they were racist, the game's fucking dead. No one's playing it. So where are all these people that claimed the game was super good and it was the best game ever? Where are they now? Like, am I right or or were they right? I, I don't know, right? It's, it's, there's no way to tell, really. But all right, so that is the backstory of all of this. So we're not going to watch the first video from Rev Says Desu because he's basically just going to go over the same shit there. In this, no, oh, straight white male, that means privilege to them. Courtney, absolutely. This just screams of a lack of understanding of the real world or a refusal to admit that the world is not what they want it to be. Look, the argument for me, right, has never been that you shouldn't have gay characters in a game, right? Or that you shouldn't have trans characters in a game. I have no problem if those characters are in there. But if those characters are going to be in there, Give those characters an actual good fucking narrative. Give them a reason for being there. And then maybe, just maybe, make their sexuality part of their narrative arc. Right. So if you're going to create a character and you're going to say this character is gay, but this character being gay has nothing to do with this character's story, then, well, why did you say the character is gay? The, the character being gay has nothing to do with the character's story. So I'm not sure why we wrote this into the story to begin with. Right? We could have just left it open and allowed the player to decide what they thought this character was. And if they wanted to have the character as gay, they could have done that. Right? If they didn't, they didn't have to. Uh, the other way of doing it is to make the character's sexuality so unimportant to the story that it basically disappears. And a character that comes to mind that was done actually really, really well is Claire from Cyberpunk 2077. Now, those of you that have played Cyberpunk 2077 and maybe you haven't done Claire's storyline, Claire is the one that wants you to go racing all throughout Night City. And through her story, you actually learn that she's trying to kill a specific guy that killed her husband. And it's actually a very cool storyline. And she, at some point during a conversation, reveals to you that she is a trans uh, woman, right? So she's not a, a, a biological woman, she's a trans woman. But it is so matter-of-factly revealed. It is so not made a big deal that it doesn't matter. Like, you, you just go, oh, shit, okay, cool. Well, let's go kill this motherfucker that killed your husband, right? No one gives a shit. Those are the two options you have. The problem that most gamers have is when you make it a big fucking deal, Right? So you're making a massive fucking deal, but then it has nothing to do with the actual story or the actual gameplay or the actual narrative arc. So you basically used gay people as a fucking token. Just so that you could tell gay people, look, gay people, we have gay people in our game. Well, why then? What, what, what's your fucking point here? That makes no sense. Right now, they're just using them as a checklist to include. Captain Zenith, that's literally, that's, that's my takeaway from this as well. But all right, let's see. Hey, what's up, guys? Up here. So recently, there's been a very big movement again. That's how it feels a lot of time. Barrels, I have gay people that tell me this. I have gay people that tell me. They feel like they're being turned into tokens for big companies to bargain with. Because 
they're told in the beginning specifically a lot of gay people fall for this where game companies would make this whole who hoopla about diverse characters and then they get into the game and they realize wait but fuck this character like what what is important why is this character gay when there's nothing there it's made this big deal but it doesn't change anything it doesn't add anything it doesn't take anything away from the character and again if you're going to be a good writer you would understand that if you have a gay character in your story a gay character's perspective is going to be different to that of a straight character because the way they went through the world is going to be very different to the way that a white person went through the world, right? And a, pe a person of color went through the world. So you're going to write that into your story, but then you also have to make it relevant to your fucking world. If you have a game, right, that's filled with fairies and fucking fae and, and fucking dwarfs and gnomes and shit, then I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the overwhelming majority of people in your world couldn't give two fucks if two guys are sucking each other's dicks. They have bigger things to worry about, right? There's fairies stealing their children and there's flying dragons fucking burning their castles down. They probably don't give a shit about two dudes sucking dick, right? So then making your character gay in this world literally means that the gay character and the straight character goes through exactly the same issues in life because them being gay isn't a problem. So if you want to have a gay character in your in your game, you have to make that relevant. So for example, the gay character grew up in a, in a kingdom where being gay was absolutely considered an, a sin and they would burn you at the stake, right? Or they would give you to the dragon to fucking feed the dragons, right? Then you can have a very interesting narrative arc around this character because you've now set up the world in such a way that this character's perspectives will matter to the story. But that's not whatever happens, right? It's just, oh, here's a gay character, so all the gays will shut the fuck up. That's, that's generally how it feels, right? Um, almost everything that I've seen ever about the Fae in fiction has them having diverse sexualities. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think the Fae would fuck just about everyone, uh, even against your will. <laughs> to the point that she gets loved in situations she doesn't support. Battle Christ, what, what are you talking about? Wait, wait, wait. I, I missed something. I missed something. Of gay characters, like Dion is the best one. Him being a great character has nothing to do with his sexuality. Pax, and I think that's what most people want, right? One of my favorite games of all time, Never Fade Away, is in my favorite playlist. Against all right, the let's company see. Sweet Baby Inc. Now, today we're going to go over some very explosive updates regarding that company. But yesterday we talked about them and some of the initial drama that started with their company. And to sum that up in a minute before we get into the new stuff, basically Sweet Baby Inc. is a consulting firm for the video game industry. And you can see from their about section using terms like yep. empathetic stories and diversification. The second someone has in their bio um, empath or emp be more empathetic to the world or show a little bit more empathy, or love is the way, or anything like that. Like, the second that shit shows up on your company, head, uh, like your letterhead, or anywhere on a bio, you need to know that this is the most evil person in the world, most likely. Like, this this is the fascists. Uh, you need to stay the fuck away from those people. Because most ordinary, normal human beings don't have, don't feel the need to remind everyone that they are, in fact, a good person. The only people that need to remind everyone consistently that they are, in fact, a good person are the people whose actions don't display them as actual good people. To describe their goals, you understand that they're woke and a lot of what they're doing is injecting woke nonsense into yep. the companies and games that they're partnering with. And you can see from their client list. Bro, look at this. Look at that. And you wonder why the gaming industry is falling the fuck apart, bro. That is all of the gaming industry. Who isn't on there? Oh, fuck me, bro. No wonder games are so shit. And if any of you are thinking Blizzard isn't on there, it's because Blizzard have an in-house council. Like, Baby Inc. is... It, they're not just partnering with Blizzard. They have in-house offices. <laughs> that's why... That's why Blizzard isn't on this list. 
they have gotten very <laughs> deep into the industry despite only being around since 2018. You can see some of the names, very big companies. And here is a list of the games that they have worked on. And this Oh, this makes so much fucking sense, boys. Now this makes sense. Oh, wow. God of War Ragnarok. Everyone complained about the writing in God of War Ragnarok. Now, it's important to remember Sweet Baby Inc. only helps with narrative direction and character creation, right? Character development. They, they don't touch gameplay. No one complained about God of War's gameplay. A lot of people complained about the narrative direction for God of War. Like, it just felt childish and shit. Um, Suicide Squad, exactly the same problem. Yeah, you should not be hiring these people to write your games for you. Like, he, you should absolutely not. This is something, again, listed on their website, and a lot of people have looked at this list and said, I don't even know the other games on here, but I don't want to play them. I never wanted to play Alan Wake 2, so who gives a shit? Is Riot Games on that list? I, I didn't see Riot Games. No. Wizards of the Coast is on here. Games Workshop is also not on here. That's a good thing. No. Riot Games isn't on here. Yep, that makes sense. That's why a lot of these games are failures because they have a bunch of woke nonsense in them. And that can be traced Ooh. back to an identifiable source now. And that is Sweet Baby Inc. So in response to this revelation a lot of people have had about this company, a Steam group was created called Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. And all this... Do you guys want to know why the free market is such an amazing place? It's this. Some dude decided to create a curator group, and it's called Sweet Baby Inc. Detected, where the group looks at games before they come out and then warn their users when Sweet Baby Inc. was involved in the development or creation of those games in any way, shape, or form. This is the beauty of the free market. The fact that we have this. And the group has exploded, by the way. Like, Sweet Baby Inc. tried to take these guys down and it actually, they, they had like 6,000 members. They're now almost 80,000 members. <laughs> so the group has just exploded this group does is track those publicly listed games that sweet baby inc has worked on that is also shared on their website and provides this to people so they know what games sweet baby inc is working on so they can consider that before they make the purchase yeah now in response to this about two days ago multiple employees of sweet baby inc Went on, went on a tirade on Twitter, including this user who led an entire harassment campaign against the creators of the group and demanded that their followers report this group and its creator. You can see also this Felix at home individual with the at Lego butts as their username would also join in on this, trying to get this Steam group taken down. Now, of course, this had the Streisand effect, where their complaining about this Steam group only increased awareness of this group, and yeah, it has exploded <laughs> in popularity and now has over 60,000 followers and is growing by fast. I think it's actually larger than that now. I, I saw a screenshot of it, but I have not verified it. But I don't even know where the fuck you go to join groups on Steam. That's how much I do not look at forums in video games. Thousands every single hour. And I ended yesterday's video with this tweet from Grums, who has been around the related industries for a very long time. And he started making a yep. connection between this current situation with Sweet Baby Inc. and Gamergate and some of the active participants in that. And as it turns out, he is at 86k now. There you go. As I said, I saw I saw a screenshot literally, I think this morning or just late last night, that had like 79,000 followers and so i was pretty sure it was over 80, 80 000 already now dld thank you so much man really appreciate the the share there not a number of companies can i ignore no no what bothers me is the fact that there are companies that actually partnered with this fucking racist group he was entirely correct so gamergate in a very quick and sloppy summary basically it was a movement exactly 10 years ago where yeah. A group called Feminist Frequency started yep. a movement where they were trying to inject their woke agenda into... That's not... 
I saw entirely correct. I mean, I guess if we're doing a quick broad overview, but that's not entirely correct. Femini Feminist Frequency was created in Gamergate to basically turn the entire... What what's interesting about Gamergate that a lot of people didn't realize, gamers won Gamergate. Like, on paper, we won. We shut down the fucking feminists. Gamers from all over literally say to the feminists, suck a dick, get the fuck out of our video games. But, and this is what makes these sort of cultural battles so very fucking scumbaggery or scumbaggy. They won the culture war in the long run. Because while the gamers managed to successfully reject the feminists, the game companies sided with the feminists. Now, you have to start asking yourself a question here. If we are in a free market system where wanting to get the consumer, right, and the most amount of money out of the consumer, why would the gamers win, successfully reject the feminists, and push the feminists out of their spaces, and yet the companies would then a few years later side with the companies that the gamers already rejected? Like, why is that happening? Because, I mean, the gamers have spoken. The gamers have said, we don't want anything to do with this bullshit. Get the fuck out of our spaces. And we successfully repelled them. And yet, 10 years later, every single one of the gaming companies are now infested with feminism and have infested with this post-modernist woke hellscape that, that we call modern Western gaming. To the point where me, previously an activist for Western gaming, I was a firm believer that Western games are better than Eastern games in every single way, shape, and form. Now I have to admit that, fuck it, maybe the future is Asian. Like, maybe, yeah, maybe we should all marry Asian women and just play Asian fucking video games, because the West is fucked. Like, every game that comes out of the West is just complete fucking bullshit. To the video game industry, this grift got so far that its leaders, Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn, spoke before the United Nations. Looking at this picture, there is no picture that captures two more useless groups yeah. than feminist frequency and the united nations <laughs> i love that that is true though <laughs> but eventually the grift ran dry and feminist frequency shuts down but little do we know i mean to be fair the grift was real feminist frequency basically completely died out uh based on a number of promises that never came to be, that Zoe girl kept promising that she was going to make the world's first unwoke game. That game never came out. Both of them stole millions of dollars from their followers time and time again. It was, it was absolutely ridiculous. The grift was absolutely ridiculous. Know that the people who were involved with that movement and its supporters would entrench themselves deep within the video game industry over the past couple of years and they did it in a way that was not very upfront and it went behind basically in the shadows yeah. and people didn't know about this for years until now and remember this lego butts i think what what people need to realize is evil never sleeps and it's interesting movies tend to get this right uh lord of the rings is probably the the universe that that captures this better than any other universe. While everyone in Middle Earth was relaxing and life was going on and everyone was happy and everyone was was everything was just hunky dory, evil kept planning. Sauron never stopped preparing. Right? And that's the problem with evil. You see, most of us have actual jobs, have, have lives that we want to live, and we just want to play video games on the weekend or in the evenings. We don't want to deal with this bullshit 24-7. The people like Felix at home, he does nothing but deal with this. This is his life. His mission is to destroy whiteness in video games, and he will stop at nothing to get that done. 
and that's how they won. That's how they beat us. Because we won the battle, but ultimately they won the war. User account here. This was one of the people trying to tell their followers to report and take down the Sweet Baby Inc. detected group on Steam. Well, a lot of people have traced that user to direct participants. Uh, Shinob Shinobin, not really. So they don't pay the gaming companies anything. The gaming companies pay them. Right, they're a consultancy firm. Now, there is an argument to be made. ESG scores can be used here because companies, gaming companies specifically, will score ESG uh, points if they make their games super woke and super diverse. And that can lead to tax breaks and that can lead, lead to you know better uh, lending interests and things of that nature. But there's no, like, it's not like Baby Inc. is paying the companies for this shit. It's the companies paying these fuckers to make their game shit. And what I don't understand is how the companies have not put two and two together yet. Every time we pay this company to make our video game better, it performs fucking worse. We don't understand. Like, why are our games not selling? <laughs> Try this. Don't hire them. And let's see how that goes. And Gamergate, including Zoe Quinn. This was something that Alex would talk about, and he would highlight the connection from way back in 2014 to as recent as only a few weeks ago. And he also highlights the truly disturbing behavior that these people openly celebrate. See, here's a tweet from 2014, not 10 years ago, where Felix at Lego Bus decided to at Zoe, saying we exploded their site. OMG us. Zoe responds with at Lego Bus, oops, we DDoSed something on accident. What they mean is they were having a conversation about a website called the Fine Young Capitalists. This was back in the Gamergate days. And by doing so, they basically sent pretty much all of their ilk to that website, basically just DDoSing that website inadvertently by having that conversation. In fact, here is Zoe Quinn admitting to that from the previous deleted tweets that she made earlier. Number four, the DDoS was nothing other than shitty infrastructure on their part, being unable to handle the traffic from Twitter's convo about them. Ah, yes. Let me go ahead and use my large platform to talk about people and blame it on their infrastructure rather than anything else. So going back yeah, to the original well, post, I mean, we can see what it is. that Lego Butts, at Felix at Home, has direct ties to Zoe Quinn, who also had yeah, direct ties to Andrew Sarkeesian, Makes who sense. also worked on Feminist Frequency, and now is directly working with Sweet Baby Inc. So I think after seeing that evidence, it is very clear that there is a very present connection between the employees of Sweet Baby Inc. and some of the participants of Gamergate. Now, like I can tell you guys now that it runs much deeper than this. Okay, so have you ever wondered why 25 years ago, a lawyer that has never made video games in his entire life could get a job at Blizzard, and yet that can no longer happen today? Like, if you have not gone to university to study video game design, there is a very, very small chance that you will ever work for any of the AAA video game companies. If you look on all of their websites, what do they ask first, front and fucking center on every single job application? There's a requirement for university. You have to have spent time at university getting some or other degree. Why is that? <clears throat> well, for gaming companies, it's mostly ease of use. I can take a, a, a shot on a random nobody that loves video games, and maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't, but I have no idea of knowing until I actually see the person in, in, at work. Or I can hire someone that went through university, and I know at least to some extent they know how to make video games. These guys, the guys from Sweet Baby Inc., all of these woke guys, they have infected the universities. So now, the problem is no longer just that you have groups like Feminist Frequency who no longer exist, Sweet Baby Inc., who will probably no longer exist in a few years from now. But the enemy is no longer at the gate. The enemy is in the village. They are the ones making the games. So you wonder why even companies that isn't on that list, why their games are becoming more and more fucking woke, it's because the people that are working on those games are already super fucking woke. Their stories are already super woke. 
right? Because they've gone through university. They've learned how to make good woke stories. And it, it's sad because I bet if you gave me a month, I would be able to write a very good story without using a straight white male in my story at all. Like, if you really gave me a month, I would be able to do that. Without a single straight white male, I would be able to write a, a very good story. Just by not making it about the people's sexualities. Just making it so that they happen to not be straight or white or male. But of course, that's not the point. So, if there are... If the... If the idea really was that you wanted people from different sexualities and different races being seen, why would you then make the story so shit around these people? It almost feels like you're wanting, you want the opposite to happen. It's not that you want people to know that trans people exist or that people need to know that gay people exist. It's like you want people to hate these people. Because you keep making the stories that include them shit. So what the fuck is going on? Like, are you actually allies or are you in some weird way the enemy? I don't understand what's going on. Friends and facts, like a bad case of syphilis. True bad request. Speaking of those participants, you have people like Lego Butts here. And a lot of people have been dredging up their tweets, including recent ones from only a few weeks ago like this, which states... I usually get grossed out when straight, white, rich people kiss, but even I think those two are pretty cute. I mean, first of all, like, what is this? Uki Violetta's burner account or something? Like, what's going on here? But there's been a lot of other tweets people have been looking at from this Sweet Baby Inc. employee, including this one, in quote, saying, I'm so mad because they killed the billionaire who turned evil that I'm going to show how racist I am, end quote, is honestly a pretty funny take to have. Now, this is a reference, of course, to the final scene of Suicide Squad uh, right. Kill the Justice League. Now, the reason people were upset about this scene had nothing to do with billionaires or racism or anything like that. People were very disappointed by this game as a whole, but particularly this scene, because the lines delivered by Batman were the final lines delivered by the now late Kevin Conroy, who is considered the voice of Batman, someone who is beloved within the related franchises. And that's why oh, okay. people were upset because they felt like his final lines of his career were wasted on a bad product. However, let's talk about Suicide Squad some more. This was an absolute failure of a game where even Warner Brothers has come out and said basically- No shit, Sherlock. Uh, Warner Brothers says that Suicide Squad killed the Justice League has fallen short of our expectations. You don't fucking say it. But I was told on Twitter, that the game is incredible. Like, people told me on Twitter that I'm just a racist for not liking the game, and that the game is actually the best game ever. So why is it not doing so well? Could it have something to do with the fact that, you know, straight white males just uh, control how good games do? Or could it be that the game is really just shit? I don't know. I mean, I, I genuinely don't know. I, where are all these... Uh, like, dude, what I don't understand, about half of America itself is left-wing, right? Or, or at least on the left. The other half is on the right. Um, You would argue that that's probably worldwide the case. Half of, be half of people around the world is left, the other half is right. So you would expect a game that is good even if that game doesn't speak to conservatives, to still do pretty good because it still has half the human fucking population to want to play it. But as it turns out, not even the people on the left want to play these fucking games. So clearly, these games are only made for people on the far left, and the fact that these games keep failing should fucking tell you that there's not that many people on the far left. Because if there were all those people on the far left, this would not happen. These games would do phenomenally well. Highly, <clears throat> but people aren't buying playing it. Well, that's the funny thing, Pax. Like, but that's, we already know the media does this, right? Uh, the media praises games uh, for 
like the stupidest shit. I'll give you guys a great example of this. A few years ago, Battlefield 2042, I think, launched, right? And every single gamer flamed that game for being an absolute pile of shit. IGN comes out and they give it a 7 out of 10. Like that's their score, 7 out of 10. You read IGN's article and the entire article is fucking negative. Like the entire ar article is about how bad the game is, right? And how things aren't working, all the bugs and the game breaking bugs of the game uh, and how the, 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 uh, the bullet rage is just absolutely shit. Aiming is absolutely shit. Like everything's just terrible. And then it ends by saying, but we still had fun. And so seven out of 10 is a fair score. It's like, well, not according to your fucking article. Like, your article itself suggests that this is more like a 4 out of 10, maybe a 3 out of 10 game. Why is it 7 out of 10? They know most people aren't reading the article. And they have deals with Activision Blizzard where Activision Blizzard advertises on their site. So if they gave, uh, or EA uh, advertises on their site. So if they gave, you know, Battlefield 2042 a bad review, EA would stop advertising on IGN and IGN would lose a shit ton of money. So they give it a 7 out of 10. That makes EA happy, because most people just look 7 out of 10. Oh shit, I'll buy it. And then the article is them giving their honest opinion on what it is. You can't trust any of these people. Any of these people. Baldur's Gate 3 was quite woke, but still good. You see, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call Baldur's Gate 3 woke, though. <clears throat> I wouldn't call Baldur's Gate 3 woke. Um, my... I, I guess it depends on your definition of woke, right? But if we're talking about woke in the truest sense of the word, what I view this as is people pushing their politics down my throat with me having no ability to escape it, right? So every everywhere I turn, their politics is all up in my fucking ass and I can't get out of it. There's nothing I can do. I have to eat their fucking politics and I have to deal with their consistent fucking preaching to me. That is what I consider to be woke. Baldur's Gate 3 gives you the, a choice on how you want to deal with everything. Like you can either engage in the more liberal woke stuff of the game or you don't have to at all, right? So it's literally like you can be as conservative or as liberal as you want to be in Baldur's Gate 3. And I've never had a problem with that because most of the greatest games that I ever played gave you the option to play the way that you wanted to play without being forced to, you know, without having politics forced into your fucking, um, it, it, you know, down your throat or whatever. Exclusive, which just happened to include things that are considered woke. Yeah, I would say Baldur's Gate 3 is sort of a game that was literally made for everyone. And they included elements of everything for everyone. But you as the player have complete freedom over what you choose to engage in and what you choose not to engage in at all, right? Uh, and just to be clear, Kiro, the, the main in Baldur's Gate 3 coming on way too fucking strong, that was confirmed to be a, a bug. Uh, it, it, it had something to do with a romance bug. And what it, happened, what it did was it made female characters way harder to romance. And male characters would basically fall in love with you just by you walking past them. Which, technically speaking, one could probably argue is very realistic. Uh, <laughs> to some extent, right? I remember when we were playing it, I went up to Gail and I asked Gail, so why do you keep fucking eating all of my, my magical items? And the next minute, Gail thinks we're fucking married. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I asked you a simple question. I, I was just curious why the fuck you keep using all my items and now we're married? Like, are you for real? I mean, my relationship with, uh, with Shadowheart kept progressing. I mean, Gail got fucking jealous. And I'm like, bro, are you high? Like, there's nothing between us. I told you earlier, I don't view you as such. But it was, it was fucking hilarious to just see that, right? But it was confirmed to be a bug and it is no longer as it was before, right? Um, so I would say in that sense, I think it's a fine game. Have the options there. I think that's how games should be done. You know, 
include all of the options for any type of person to be playing it, but don't force people down a road that they don't want to go in. Give people the freedom to play the game that they want to play the way that they want to play it. Basically, uh, lesser companies would have gone bankrupt based on how badly this game is performed. Now, of course, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is one of the games listed on Sweet Baby Inc.'s page as one of the games that they have worked on. Things are starting to add up, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Which leads us to another person we haven't talked about, another employee of Sweet Baby Inc., the CEO right yeah. here, Kim Belair, who has a very, very interesting history. Uh, it's a Gundam, did a really good rundown in his recent video about her. I'll put a link to that in the description, but basically, Epic Thulu, I mean, I, I don't know. That's not what Woke is. Woke has nothing to do with mixed races or not mixed races. You could literally write a Woke story by using all white, all straight characters. It could be Woke, right? Uh, if you So here's the thing. If we go to the original definition of Woke, what is Woke? It started in the black community. And it was specifically designed for, uh, they called black people woke when black people started to recognize the systems that were working against them. Right or wrong, doesn't matter. But when black people could recognize that, you know, the government was indeed not actually doing the best for them, the government was actually part of the problem, that would be considered woke. So it is the ability to see systemic problems within your environment. That is what makes you woke. The modern day definition of woke is when every system is problematic and therefore every system needs to be torn down. That is what makes something woke. So if you have a story where you're literally trying to tear down every single system that exists in, in society and you're trying to make everything fucking stupid, I'll give you an example of how I could use straight white characters and make the most woke fucking story ever a husband and a wife they're married the husband is a complete lazy bum that doesn't do fucking anything sucks at his job his wife works all the fucking time brings in all of the money the dude is a deadbeat dad his kids hate him uh his life is like i said falling apart his wife sits on his head all day she's the boss he's the pussy uh that's a woke story why is it a woke story because there's a number of systems, like, for example, marriage, like, for example, masculinity, like femininity, like having children, being a father, being a mother. All of these are systems within society, right? And what I've done with that story is I've basically turned each of those systems into a toxic wasteland, telling people that watch the show, inventing this image in their minds that this is what these systems lead to. The wife complains to her friends the whole time about how she hates being married and she hates being a mother and she hates her husband and she wished she was a lesbian or whatever, right? Now I've created a, I've literally created a story where the whole point is to tear down the systems on which our civilization is built. That is what makes something woke. It has fuck all to do. And if I made those characters black, it would still be a woke story because I'm still tearing down at the systems that created society and the systems that society kind of rely on in order to operate, right? That is the difference between woke and unwoke. Basically, she is the definition of woke nonsense. She has been pushing that stuff for years very publicly. And also she has a very bizarre self-insert problem where she's constantly self-inserting herself into stories that she's working on kind of makes sense when you you see this whole situation when it comes to things like narcissism which is very present throughout oh, yeah. this company but anyways her connection is established by this quote retweet by ricky here where a member of uh of rocksteady games is arguing because rocksteady games is the company behind suicide squad kill the justice league and he is trying to basically say well we worked with Sweet Baby Inc., but they didn't have that much of an impact on our story and what we were doing, where Ricky would point out tweets that show the exact opposite, including this interaction between this Rocksteady employee and Kim Belair, where he says, after 11 years in this industry, I finally did it. 
a black character on the front of a triple a game dreams come true y'all aren't there like fifa and madden games that have black characters on them already cyberpunk phantom liberty has um idris alba right there on the fucking front cover of the game so what the fuck are we talking about like you didn't do shit bro you weren't even the first like this has happened like long before you so i don't know what the fuck you're on about <laughs> like for them do it a black character on the cover yeah i'm pretty sure this has happened like a, a lot they, I'm pretty sure this isn't like a new thing. <laughs> Holy shit. Which, by the way, is the most astroturfed, ridiculous achievement I've ever seen in my life. Because in order to do this, they basically took the character Deadshot and made him black for no reason at all. So yep. it's already a weird way to achieve this goal he's going after but also this is a straight up lie everyone knows you could easily find dozens of titles that have black characters on the front of triple a titles like what yep. is this guy talking about but you see kim down here praising this tweet and responding to that this employee of rocksteady game says so glad you were present to help mold his character kim didn't have an impact huh i think it's very obvious based on this exchange that sweet baby ink had an impact on Suicide Squad, Kill the yep. Justice League. I think it's very obvious based on this exchange, Rizzo, take care as yourself, well bro. as the overall direction of the game and some of the choices that Rocksteady Games made. Now, this individual from Rocksteady Games has been fighting in the trenches with two very conflicting goals. On the one hand, trying to praise Sweet Baby Inc. for helping out their game and making great choices, but on the other Fucking hand, trying asshole, to downplay man. their contributions to save face on Twitter. Obviously, this isn't working very well. And also, I can think of nothing more poetic than this screenshot right here. So currently, there are more people connected online in the Sweet Baby Inc. curator group than there are for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Yep. Ouch. That is... May I just say, ladies and gentlemen, in the future, when you see me celebrating layoffs from companies, uh, please understand that I am now more convinced than ever that when these companies lay people off, it's people like this fuck that worked on Deadshot over here. It's dead white. It's someone that wasn't required in the industry anyways. Uh, no gaming company is going to fire or lay off their best developers. Gaming companies are going to get rid of the people that are bullshit and aren't needed. So, yeah, it's fine. Right? Let them lay off as many people as they want. The gaming industry requires it. Otherwise, we're fucked. <clears throat> Making every FIFA cover for the last uh, 10 years. Well, there's a black person on the on the FIFA cover. What do you know? And this was uh, 2005, no less. Wow, wow, wow. There's another black guy on there. Or He's Brazilian, but he's, he's black. That's in 2008. Um, ooh, this was a bit problematic. At least it's not just a white guy on there in 2014. Oh, shit. 2004 even. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Two black guys. Can you imagine in 2004? The racists weren't doing their job back then. Fuck me. Oh, this is a problematic one, boys. This is two white men. Oh, 2012 was not a good year for FIFA. Uh, another white guy on the cover. Yeah, not a good year for FIFA. 2001, I don't even know who the fuck this is, but okay. Uh, 2016, oh, there's another black guy over there. Uh, another black guy over there. Two white guys, that's problematic. Another white guy, another white guy. A black guy. Another black guy. So what, what the fuck was this guy saying again? He was saying how he, after 11 years, he managed to get the first black guy on the cover of a game? We have evidence going back as far as 2004 of that shit happening. So I don't know what the fuck that guy's on about. Very embarrassing for a AAA title, which, by the way, only released a month ago. So the fact that they're down to around 500 in-game yep. players is... And this is a live service game, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be fooled by thinking this is a single player game. It's a live action game. It's a live service game. 
the idea of these games are that they should be played for years and years and years and years and years. The fact that the game only has 559 in-game players a month after its launch, and you have games like Pal World, you have games like Enshrouded, you have like literal games that aren't even that live service, still getting more? That should tell you something. Very, very bad. And this really just captures the movement right now, okay? People are saying no to the woke nonsense and the bad titles like Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, and they are rallying behind this sweet baby ink detected group because it captures the concerns of a lot of gamers that they've been having for years, but now they have an identifiable source that yep. they can link to these problems with the games that they've been consuming over the past couple of years. But moving forward, this probably doesn't surprise anyone at all, but there has been uh, claims that members of Sweet Baby Inc. and their supporters have been Post. leaving some very interesting reviews and posts on this community yep. page for the Sweet Baby Inc. detector. Now, this wouldn't be very surprising if there was some involvement from Sweet Baby Inc. because let's face it, a lot of the people from the Gamergate movement have made false posts all the time. Who could forget this one from Bri Brianna Wu, who was a member of Feminist Frequency, who made this tragic tweet trying to garner sympathy, saying that she was being attacked and her game yeah, was getting review bombed by angry of men course. and things like that. Well, I told you guys before, never believe anyone when they fucking tell you. Um, never believe anyone when they tell you that they're being attacked or that they're being harassed or anything of that nature. Uh, they're lying. There's no screenshots of that. There's no evidence. It's just them pretending. Unfortunately for her, she never logged out of her developer account. So when she posted the screenshot, it made it very obvious that she was writing her own hate comment. Oh, fuck. Did caught. Oh, shit. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> oh shit still logged into her developer account writing her own hate thread oh man imagine how fucking sad that is you're so irrelevant that you have to you have to write your own hate threads <laughs> oh my fuck yeah that was embarrassing but Let's read some of these discussions on the Sweet Baby Inc. Detector page. So this person says, let's defuse this situation. I know this group claims it isn't trying to kill Sweet Baby Inc., but this is exactly what will happen if you don't stop now. Not all SBI employees are as unreal. Okay, Adraxis, I need you to understand something. I want this group to kill Sweet Baby Inc. In fact, I will go further. I want every single person that works for Sweet Baby Inc. to lose their jobs, lose their homes, lose their families, and end up on the streets. That's what I want, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart. That is what I want for you. I want that. I want you to lose everything and never be able to recover from it, ever. Because you're a fucking scumbag, evil cunt. So, get fucked. Reasonable as that one random person on Twitter, they have actual jobs and families to support. It's not like they are hurting anybody. Yeah, Please they can go consider fuck themselves. closing this group. Here's another one saying, if you are against Sweet Baby Inc., you are racist. And no, I'm not suggesting that you guys go out and fucking harass these people. I'm asking the universe to do that on our behalf. The universe will decide what these people deserve. Fundamentally, I think the people that work for Sweet Baby Inc. are evil to the fucking core. And so I have no, no problem hoping for them to lose everything and end up on the fucking street. I don't wish for them to come to harm. I don't want anyone to physically harm them. So let's just get that out of the way. It's fucking sad that in 2024 I have to say that or else some people go, oh, Oh, he, he's directing his fucking his, his viewers to go attack the people. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I just want them to never again work in any industry because I genuinely believe that these people will be the downfall of society.
<clears throat> Good thing you clarified it. I have to. You never know, right? One stupid fuck might run with it and start doing stupid shit. So you have to clarify this, this shit. But yeah, I'm hoping that we don't have any stupid fucks in the chat. Assists. Sweet Baby Inc. And of course, it just describes their mission statement and says down here, SBI is only dedicated in the story part of the game. They don't work on the gameplay. So my question for the anti-SBI people is why you think SBI ruins games. Isn't gameplay the important part of a game after all? Oh my. Okay, dude, let me, let me fucking clarify this for you. If your statement read true, why the hell does Sweet Baby Inc. even involve themselves? If narrative is so unimportant to video games, why does Sweet Baby Inc. exist to interfere with the narrative at all? I mean, it's not important at all. Why wouldn't they then instead interfere with the gameplay, which is the actual important part of the game, according to you? You can suck my dick, loot. You can suck it real good. Just gurgle on that shit for a little. Narrative is everything. I will play a game with dark shit gameplay. If the story is good. If the story is shit, I don't care how good your gameplay is. You could have the base, like your gameplay could tickle my asshole all the hours of the day that I'm playing it. And I would still not play it because the story is shit and I don't want to play it. So no, suck my dick. You're just wrong on every level. God, this person is the least obvious sweet baby ink employee. But they go on to say the truth is you hate SBI only because... They add diverse characters, people of color, non-binary, etc. No, oh, man, this is such a fucking eye roll. You hate, basically, you hate black people and gay people. That's why you don't like them. Yeah, I guess that's true. I hate my own brother who's fucking gay. Uh, I, I, I should have hated Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty because uh, one of the main characters there is black, who I happen to love. Oh, man, I'm such a bad racist, though. What am I going to do, chat? Like, how can I be a better racist? I love Morgan Freeman in, in almost all movies. Denzel Washington is, like, fucking insane. Um, what's that? Like, I'm very bad with actor names, but it's the dude that played in um, Django. I think it's Jamie something. Love his movies as well. Hmm. Jamie Foxx, that's the one, yeah. Um, he played next to the guy from Titanic. DiCaprio, that guy. Um, fucking hell, I'm a bad racist, man. I should really be better at that. I, I, sh I mean, as a racist, I should obviously not be watching movies with black actors in them. But I just can't help it. They're so good. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> It is, dude, it's, it's fucking hilarious that they would say this when in reality, if if someone makes a good movie, they, let's be honest, when Denzel Washington is in a movie, tell me you don't immediately go, yeah, I want to watch that movie. Or when you find out that Morgan Freeman is going to be in a movie. Or Kevin Hart makes a movie. Don't you instantly, I, I need to watch that. It's Kevin Hart. Of course, it's going to be funny. I need to watch that. So it has nothing to do with race. Clearly, it has nothing to do with race. And if it had to do with gay people, why did people love How I Met Your Mother so much? Yes, Bonnie plays a straight fucking womanizer, but Neil Patrick, it's Neil Patrick Harris. He's gay as fuck, right? Sherlock, the dude that played Sherlock, uh, also the dude that played Doctor Strange. Sherlock, Doctor Strange, and uh, in the series, Sherlock, um, I, I don't know what his name is. But he is also gay. So clearly, if you were such a big homophobe, you wouldn't watch um, movies where gay men are playing the re lead roles. Like, that would be disgusting. If you're a homophobe, they should put you off. But they don't. Because we happen to not give a fuck about it. Etc. Anything else is just a cheap excuse. Your curator list is as racist as if you made a list of all games with black people in it. This group is against Steam rules and should be taken down. Hopefully the moderation acts quickly. And here's one more very short and sweet message saying, video games are not for right-wingers. Sorry guys, 
You're not the audience companies care about, nor the side that creates video games. Otherwise, you would not need to create groups like this. Also, there's a lot of people... If... If that person's <clears throat> definitions are correct, and they're saying, I'm pretty sure Benedict Cumberbatch is gay. I'm pretty sure he is. I think he actually said that in an interview once. I could be wrong. I don't follow the fucking actors all that well, but I remember watching an interview where he did say that he was a gay man. Um, but never mind that. The If we go by his estimations, right, and he's saying that we just don't like these games because these games aren't made for right-wingers, and that means that all of the games that we love are made, or are right-wing games, then games are about to die. Because all of the quote-unquote right-wing games did super well and made a fuck ton of money. But all of the games that are made for the left-wingers are not making money. They're, they're doing absolutely shitty. So what exactly is the argument? Okay, how, how does that work? <clears throat> Married to a woman? Oh, shit, I didn't even know that. Then who did, who said that? Was it an interview with him and someone else then? And then someone else said they're gay. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was a Doctor Strange interview, but then again, I don't remember exactly what the interview was about. Like I said, I don't follow the actors all that well. I just hear stuff and I watch sometimes some of the interviews that they're a part of, especially if it's like get movies or shit that I care about. And had to defend it. It could be that, Alderson. So maybe I was watching an interview about the gay character that he played and him defending it. And I didn't know that he was defending a... Like, I didn't even know he played a gay character in a movie. But all right, maybe it's that. Maybe that's where I got it from. I'm not super tuned in on uh, the actors' lives. There was an interview where they asked him about straight actors playing gay roles. Maybe it's that. I can't even fucking remember. I just remember him saying once something about being gay. Uh, and yeah, I just sort of accepted, oh shit, all right, he's gay, fine. And that just, that's the reality that I've lived with my entire fucking life since I've known him. All right, he's a gay guy, cool. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thanks for clarifying. Nobody told, because I'm right-leaner, I'm not allowed to play games. I'm not even a right-leaning fuck, like, I wouldn't play a game that's made specifically for right-wingers. I would find games made specifically for right-wing people very boring. Because again, if you go to the far left and the far right, the amount of restrictions that exist in what you can and cannot create would ultimately just lead to not good things being made. People on Twitter defending <laughs> Sweet Baby Inc. Like this tweet saying, uh, you got to admit that you're weird with this Sweet Baby stuff because they're pointing out the games they're working on. Uh, again, I think you're weird if you're someone in a hobby like this and you don't care about these things. You let yep. people walk all over your hobby and you're just going to sit there and take it. No, if you voice your concerns and track the bad actors in your hobby, I think you're doing the right thing. And obviously the impact is getting to Sweet Baby Inc. who is scrambling right now to delete inflammatory posts made by their employees. And it's just making it even more obvious that there is a very big PR nightmare going on over there. Yeah, of and they're aware that the mask is slipping and people are starting to understand the full scope of the scene and all of the issues going on here, which is many. Bro, I can't wait for the fall of the AAA industry. Like, not gonna lie, but it is close. The AAA industry is completely devoid of creativity. It's completely devoid of talent. And I cannot wait for it to get its little cheeks clapped by the indie companies. Because most indie companies, it's so democratized, and there's so many of them, that there's no way that you could make them all woke. It's just impossible. There is not enough resources in the world to make all of them woke. I personally cannot wait. And I will laugh as they burn because they brought it upon themselves. In the video game industry, in the impact that Sweet Baby Inc., its members, its supporters, that they're having on the gaming industry. People now know, 
an identifiable source of a lot of the problems that gamers have been dealing with for years now, which really could stem back all the way to the original Gamergate. And the pattern is very obvious and the players are becoming more and more known. But that's yeah. going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, share all of your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below. And I'll see you. Yeah, I mean, 2023 and 2024 is proving that the end of the AAA industry is nigh. It is just around the fucking corner, boys. Uh, you Okay, so I had people disagree with me uh, in my last video about uh, indie games killing the AAA industry. Claiming that Helldivers 2 isn't made by an indie developer? A quick Google search will tell you that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Sony published Helldivers 2, but Helldivers 2's developer is a Swedish company, and it's absolutely an, uh, an independent studio. It, we call studios independent when those studios aren't attached to a specific publisher. There are plenty of independent studios that happen to be published by larger publishers every once in a while when they have happen to have a hit game and the publishers are willing to take out millions of dollars in order to pay for that game. But a studio that isn't attached to a publisher is called an independent studio because they don't have a permanent publisher that basically just fronts them all of their money to make whatever the fuck they want to do. So, Helldivers 2 is absolutely a, an independent developer. Uh, Palworld comes from an independent developer. Uh, I believe Enshrouded comes from an independent developer. Nightingale comes from an independent developer. Uh, Mana Lords is going to come from an independent developer. You have so many games now. Cyberpunk is an independent developer. Baldur's Gate is an independent developer. Lost Epoch is an independent developer. Bro. The W's are stacking up and the AAA industry is taking dick after dick after dick right up the asshole against their will. Well, we should say that they are inviting it because they are the ones making these video games. Last Epoch is absolutely shitting on Diablo right now. Diablo 4 from the large AAA studio. It is, it is truly funny to see. It's beautiful. I love it. Battle was, yeah, I'm not even going to go patch through all of the indie games out there, but it is interesting. When is the last time that people got super excited about a game that was a triple A game? Can you guys even remember? And the game actually delivered. So it wasn't just hype and then fell flat immediately afterwards. It, it's like, the hype was there, the game launched, and everyone was like, shit, this is the greatest game I ever played in my life. When's the last time that actually happened? I guess you could say FF7 Remake, yes. Uh, but that's Eastern game, so we can't even talk about that as being a, a, a Western game. Uh, the thing with BG3, Truffle Shuffle, uh, uh, Larian Studios is absolutely an independent developer. So... Even though Baldur's Gate had the budget of a AAA game, it is still made by an indie studio. All Baldur's Gate 3 proves is that even indie studios now are starting to make money to the point where they can actually compete with the AAA studio uh, or this AAA industry. Um, but if you look at the team from Larian Studios and you look at the amount of games that they launch, they are an independent studio. But it's not released yet. Hogwarts. Wait, was Hogwarts? Yeah, Hogwarts was Warner Brothers. Um, okay, I think Hogwarts is probably a good bet, yeah. For being from a, a very large studio and also happened to land, you know? People enjoyed Hogwarts Legacy for the most part. I mean, fuck. If we, if we compare it to all of the duds, though, it's it's actually a little um it's actually a little sad. Uh even even the problem with God of War a lot of people complained about God of War Ragnarok. People found the story to be very childish and nowhere near as good as God of War 3 or God of War 
just the God of War, right? People felt like the story, the gameplay was obviously really good, but people felt like the story was a little shit and childish at times. So I would still not argue that God of War Ragnarok was as big of a success. Um, it did have its downsides. And we already know that Sweet Baby Inc. helped on the narrative side of the game. So they are to blame for that part of the fuck up.